As an ex-Jehovah's Witness, I advocate for Jehovah's Witness to wake up, but I identify with my ex-Jehovah's Witness community. I feel very protective of our, our community and I love our community of people waking up, learning critical thinking skills and discovering who we were supposed to be all along. And nobody had warned about how Jehovah's Witnesses manipulate people into donating money until very recently. Just a couple months ago, a content creator in the XJW community started what I can only assume is a brilliant social experiment. He has spent almost a decade examining Watchtowers, so he would be the best person to put together his own scheme to teach people the manipulative way that Watchtower treats their followers. At first, I didn't get it, and I was very upset that someone would fall as low as to use manipulation tactics to get money on people whom those tactics have already been proven. It started with a few tweets that could have come from Watchtower itself, asking for money while saying he wasn't asking for money. And surprisingly, that kind of worked. People somehow didn't see through it and started throwing money at him. I can only imagine the frustration he may have felt when he realized that his community hadn't learned this important lesson. So he ramped things up. He released a video where he uses every single manipulation tactic I've described in this video to ask for money. Starting by pretending making videos like the videos I make goes beyond making videos and is instead a life-saving work. I would probably go down to like two or three videos per month, which I think would be a, something of a tragedy considering what we're doing now and the amount of content we're able to put out. The way I view it is every single video that we make has a potential to reach someone because if we're just doing two or three videos per month, great. If that's all we can do, fine. But you never know what particular video is going to appeal to a particular person at a particular point in their lives. Only really with that team and with the support of patrons and now YouTube members and with the equipment we've been able to buy because of their support, are we able to produce not just the content that we're making, but the frequency of content so that we're putting out a video at the moment sort of every day, sometimes two videos per day if you count the shorts. So. Just like Watchtower, he over-exaggerates accomplishments, like when he pretends slicing long, barely scripted videos into smaller videos somehow counts as releasing regular content, and pretends that giving money to the mother of his children is somehow your responsibility and not his. I have an amazing team working with me. I have Tibor, I have Diana working with me, and we're going to do what we can to continue with Tibor and with Diana. Pay Tibor's wages, pay my wages, pay Diana's wages. And just as I was starting to wonder if I could be wrong, he confirmed my reading by giving us the piece of resistance, apostasy. Since we had all of the turmoil last year with the defamation campaign, the channel has struggled. The defamation campaign is still very much ongoing. My lawyers are still on top of it. Uh, it's just that the Croatian legal system, I've learned, is glacially slow. And it's probably going to be years before I see any kind of justice for what was done to me and my family. The defamation campaign was and is a failure. That's right. The vague enemies that are spreading lies that you are not allowed to listen to are back. He even downplays what he did to pretend it's just about cheating on his wife regularly for years. My mistake was to be unfaithful to my partner, and I'll always be sorry about that. When, surprisingly, that's not why the vast majority of people stop supporting him. It's because of how he has continuously mistreated his wife. It's because he's been using sex work from places like Croatia, where there's a rampant human trafficking issue. And because after that, he went to the sex trafficking capital of the world, where exploitation is so widespread, it has its own very active Wikipedia article. The situation in Thailand is so bad, virtually every anti-human trafficking organization has begged visitors to stop getting sex work there because it's impossible to determine whether a sex worker is a victim of exploitation. 
and the money will most likely go to human traffickers. And, well... I think you've admitted to this that, that it wasn't just extramarital affairs, it was, it was uh, prostitution, is that right? So, it, yeah, well, I didn't want to have any relationships outside of my marriage. So, yes, it was... Um, and just to be absolutely clear, um, it was prostitution leading up to, uh, you know, before the conversation took place in in December. So, yeah, that it was with um, sex workers that I was unfaithful with my wife. And that you had sort of a moral duty, I suppose, as the leader and the face of the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, to take care in that aspect, especially because, of course, many sex workers in, well, I believe it was Croatia and Thailand, um, will have been sex trafficked. Well, I'm not a leader. i aware with the sex workers that a lot of these would have been trafficked as children. And, and that that did that is a sort of goes against something that's very important to you, which is the protection of, of, of child sex trafficking and that kind of thing, right? So I've, I've only ever had sex with consenting adults. I, I don't mean to, I'm not in, intending otherwise. I, I, I understand people's concerns about sex trafficking and, and, and that kind of thing, but you know, ultimately the bottom line is, are we talking about sex between consenting adults or are we not talking about sex between consenting adults? Well, I suppose with prostitution, it's a, it's a blurry line with, with regards to consent and where, where that, you know, we, we don't know. That's that's the truth of it. You couldn't possibly you couldn't know a Thai prostitute. And a well, I, I I dated a sex worker in Thailand. Obviously, most of his patrons saw this and realized that they couldn't support this. And he brilliantly included this in his social experiment to become Watchtower and ask for donations, pretending consequences for his potential sex crimes are somehow persecution. It was a really cruel, sadistic way of attacking my reputation and it had the predictable effect of drastically reducing the number of patrons who support my work because they came to believe that I'm someone I'm not and that I'm somehow taking advantage of them. And he finished strongly with this fellowshipping for asking questions. Some of you will have noticed I pinned a comment saying that I would automatically and unashamedly delete all abusive mean, toxic, victim-blaming comments along the lines of get a job or it's all your fault anyway. And it worked. Before I realized that this was a brilliant and obvious social experiment and I thought this was for real, I spoke out against it because, you know, advocating for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses is kind of what I do. And I got the same kind of responses I would have gotten in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Things like, don't say negative things regardless of how true they are. Or but he's doing life-saving work. Or shouldn't we focus on keeping the peace? Fully confusing criticism for insults. Many, instead of engaging with the argument, deciding to focus on whether me pointing something out was appropriate simply because it didn't portray another person in the most positive light. I was making Watchtower happy because they'd rather see us separated than working together against them. I got hit with every trick in the book to make me seem like I was betraying everything I stand for all to keep anyone from asking a very simple question. Should I support this person? And that's the question that matters, because that's the question that requires critical thinking. You have to put aside your biases and re-examine yourself and your values to determine whether that's the right thing to do. Whether that's about your religion or about some content creator, that's always a hard thing to do. And I just gotta say, wow, he did it. We would have never had this conversation if he hadn't done this amazing social experiment where he showed us that we're not done waking up just because we're out of a cult. Honestly, if it wasn't because I already saw through all of this and because, you know, all of the potential abuse and sex crimes, I'd almost think about returning as his patron myself. So instead of ruining his game for everybody, I hid his face and name so you don't know who's the content creator who's doing this. That way, I won't rub any one of the experience so artistfully crafted by this artist. However, I will give you the critical thinking questions you can respectfully ask him once you figure out who that person is. You can ask questions like, should someone who buys sex from the sex trafficking capital of the world advocate for victims of that same abuse? Or who do you think should give money to the mother of your children, you or your followers? Or maybe even, Who's Jake Vaughn and why did you delete his interview from your channel? 
all of these questions will kind of skip you ahead in the game if you are just playing it for the story and you just want to see how it ends. Or even better, do nothing. We don't engage with the Watchtower religion directly because we know how delusional they are. And that's a lesson I've applied successfully to many other things outside the religion. Instead of engaging with him or donating your ice cream money to Watchtower, how about you give me money in exchange for the most apostate toy ever? This store has already been reopened, but don't worry, I won't be retiring my very important work from YouTube, pretending I'm the only person who makes this content if you don't buy a Sparlock. As I said before, this is mainly to mess with Watchtower, so you can now also buy the files to print your own little Sparlock. This is a long video, just don't fall for scams, okay?